Okay, we've made it. What? Okay, there we go. Cloud has returned to the crew, and we're moving along. Yeah, we don't really... Oh, that's right. We need to go and pick our party. Let's go take a quick look around and see what everyone has to say. Probably won't be that much. It's a good thing we finally got Cloud back, though. Because, especially the first time I played through the game, there was a uh, little bit of an issue that I had with the last section where Cloud was unavailable. See, the thing was, all of my characters, I wasn't really that good at playing through, so I had a tendency to die a lot. But, I relied a whole lot on specific characters, ones that I used a lot. And obviously Cloud was one of those, and Tifa was another one of those. Oh yeah, when you were in Soldier. When you thought you were in a soldier. Well, anyway, I relied so much on Cloud being a member of the party that it sort of uh, messed me up in the end because oh, he's lovely. when I lost Cloud and then I lost Tifa, I was left with a lot of characters that weren't particularly high level and I didn't have the materia set up properly with them. It was all messed up. But here we are. We have finally brought Cloud back in and Cloud has gone and finally admit 
that he was never in Soldier. Now this is, a, I guess, less of a sort of sensational revelation than the idea that he wasn't Cloud at all. That would have, <laughs> that would have been an even bigger thing. And from what I've been able to read regarding the game back when it was being developed, that was actually the original intention. At some point in the story, the idea was that the cloud that we're playing as was in fact not the real cloud. The real cloud may have been dead or living in Midgar or whatever cloud's role was, he wasn't, uh, the real cloud was, his, he wasn't very important to the storyline. But at some point they sort of chickened out a little bit and decided to make cloud this cloud, the real cloud, just really confused about who he is. What the hell happened here? Huh. Wasn't here before, was it? Weird. Anyway, we gotta go here, we gotta go to Junon so we can go and, uh, collect the last piece of huge material. There's an underwater reactor down there. Down out there under the ocean. So I'm gonna go and set up my team members. I really don't feel like bringing our friggin' fat white thing, so let's, uh, do this a bit. Okay, we're ready to go. Now, even though the... the, uh, place we're going to is underwater, we are going to have to go in through the town. And up in the Junon, and then do all that there. Um, swapping around my... Swapping around my materia has caused differences between HP and all that kind of stuff that arise, so I'm gonna have to rest before I go. Fortunately, we get free room and board here because, well, we saved that little girl's life quite a while ago. Wherever she is, I don't know. Let's just move on. Ten gil, well, is that it? This guy really hates his job, I imagine. I mean, that's got to be a pretty uh, secure elevator, I would imagine. Now, I wonder if this is the only way that people get into June on it. I mean, do they... Other than, like, arriving by ship. It is weird that they built two cities above towns, but... Uh, is this the only way to get in from the land? Okay. This is the first time we've really gotten a chance to wander around this town without the parade going on. At least that's what I remember. There was the parade going on the first time through here, and then the second time is when the weapon was attacking. you be missing? One of the things you'll notice in most of the towns in this game is a change in the behavior and the way the characters react. Not talking about, uh, not talking about Cloud and all those, but we're talking about the, the sort of NPCs that are just wandering around living in the town. They are those kinds of characters. Things have changed since a meteor began to fall. I'm not quite sure how everybody would react in the event of an actual emergency like meteor falling, something like that. Something that they knew was coming and it was like the end of the world that they could tell was coming. But, uh... oh, they're fighting over this girl operating the elevator. But they, the people are starting, every, all the characters are reacting in their own way. Some of them are just going about their own business. They're operating their stores, they're doing all that kind of stuff. Whoa, slow down, what's going on? Okay. 
Okay, it's caught up. Some of the characters are going about their business. Some of them are sort of freaking out all the time. Other ones have decided to go and like stop at the gold saucer and just spend the rest of their time there. And apparently this one wanted to have sex with those two guys. Oh jeez, these guys really actively want to fight it out. Despite the fact that my cloud hasn't really been doing too much fighting because his, he was removed from the storyline, he is fairly uh, fairly strong character, high enough level they can take these guys down oftentimes in one hit. My Tifa is in the back row, she really shouldn't be. I'm gonna have to swap that out. The audio is getting kind of messed up. I'm going to swap around, mess around in the settings, see if I can get that to work properly. Okay, we may just have to continue. Dog! Let's see if we run into any more resistance. Jeez, no wonder we were able to destroy the reactors so easily. They do a terrible job defending themselves. What in the hell is that supposed to be? Well, it's a robot, and robots generally are weak against lightning. Except for this one. Damn it. Took out the gun though, that's nice. With all those uh, HP is starting to get kind of high. We're in the multiple thousands of points here. The maximum is, of course, 9,999. But uh, there's a possibility that I'm not going to reach that level in this playthrough. Only because I may not end up doing a whole lot of the extra stuff that you see some other people doing, like uh, Emerald and Ruby Weapon, an additional two weapons that are going around and terrorizing everybody. Here's something I don't quite understand why we're doing... What we're doing? Why are we doing this? Now, I know the, um, what Shinra is planning on doing. They are going to use the underwater reactor to m manufacture a large materia called the Huge Materia. And the idea is they're going to use it in an attempt to at destroy Meteor. Now, I'm not quite sure if that is really even a good idea. I mean, if in the sense that it'll work. But at least Shinra is trying something, I mean. <laughs> you don't really see, uh, the only thing Cloud and his gang are trying to do right now, as far as stopping Meteor is going, is trying to stop Shinra from stopping Meteor. And it seems like a terrible waste of time, a waste of resources. We shouldn't really be fighting against each other, but, heh, you know, good versus evil. <laughs> Maybe this, uh, they've always been trying to protect the planet. Maybe it has something to do with, uh, using the huge materia could some way damage the planet, but I don't really see how. Here's the underwater reactor. This is the reactor that powers Junon. And we've reached another elevator. Click this. 
Or no, we haven't reached an elevator. This is a, uh, I imagine this is sort of a pressurization thing or a decompression or some crap like that. No, maybe it was an elevator because we're going out the same door. Oh wow, this place is big. How did it build something so big under underwater like that? So many robots. Always with the robots. I have Tifa equipped with both the counter attack and cover materials because Cloud has already reached his maximum limit break level, yet none of the other characters have. So by having a character using both the counter attack materia and the uh, the cover materia, it results in that character taking more damage. That character goes and gets uh, more limit break uses, and that character ends up uh, using building up their limit breaks that much faster. Excuse the quick cut and the jumpy kind of scene. I was testing the audio to ensure that it was recording properly. Oh, submarines. Lots and lots of submarines. Occasionally I have a problem with this game of the volume getting kind of messed up. It getting too high and the volume of my voice being too low. It's kind of a difficult thing to do because I am, for the most part, I'm playing this game and, and recording the commentary at the same time. Now, if I were playing the game and then recording the commentary later, I'd have much better control over the volume. But the way it's recording now, my audio stream, my voice is encoded directly into the video file. So that makes it harder for me to control the volume. So every once in a while, I have to go and check the audio to see if it is at appropriate levels. Something I've been having a little bit difficulty keeping track of in the past few episodes of this series because, well, you've probably noticed it by now, the volume is a little scurry. A lot of new enemies we haven't fought before. What is this thing? Guardian! They're all robots, though, so feel free to hit them with all the lightning you got. Something that's been a little bit weird with this game was the way that, uh, oh, we're gonna fight these guys? Oh, yeah. The way that the storyline had progressed up until the Temple of the Ancients. Now, what happened with the Temple of the Ancients where we encountered Sephiroth, or actually we encountered Genova, that looked like Sephiroth, under Sephiroth's control, and it revealed Sephiroth's plan. It said that it was going to where Sephiroth was planning on summoning Meteor to, to damage the planet and using the life stream which would flow into the wound in an attempt to heal it, trying to, um, and, and he would absorb all that energy and essentially become a god. Now, it's a little weird. The reason why I say it's weird is because why did we find out about that plan so early in the game? Now, it may seem like we were quite a ways into it, but we were still in the first disc. That was a little under halfway through the game. And a lot of times they sort of do these bait and switch sort of things where the what you're hearing about being the plan is not actually the plan. It's just some sort of uh, lie that was concocted in order to throw you off. And then they have a lot of plot twists and all those kinds of things. The, these JRPGs are famous for their ridiculous number of plot twists, especially games like Xenogears or or other such things. You know what I'm talking about. So why is it that we actually got the actual plan of Sephiroth that early in the game? And it seemed like a little bit of a disappointment that 
on the outside anyway. It seems a little bit of a disappointment that they went and they revealed the plan that early. But, take into account that even though Sephiroth's plan was revealed, it still had plenty of weird little plot twists to throw at you. Specifically, I'm talking about the whole issue with Cloud being the, uh, being not who he said he was, or at least thinking he wasn't who he said he was. This is the thing that's producing the huge materia. It's condensed all that Mako into a single little stone, and that is going to be what they use against Meteor. Let's run! Is that Reno? Okay, we have another boss battle. We're gonna fight this thing called the carry armor instead of the uh, instead of fighting Reno. Another just another one of Shinra's uh, gigantic ass robots. Ah shit! I just put regen on the thing because uh, Red Thirteen has reflect automatically cast on him due to the. <laughs> because I a piece of materia I have on him. Let's see if this works. And uh, let's bolt the hell out of him. This thing was, when I first played the game, a fairly difficult enemy. I had a hard ass time defeating this thing. But I don't anticipate it being that big of a deal now. The more enemies that you have, you're fighting against, the less damage that Omni Slash will do to any specific enemy. Took out one of the arms, though. I'm missing a materia here. I'm missing magic. But, uh, eh, whatever. I'm gonna take that arm out. Quite a bit of damage for an ice attack on a robot. Other arms down. If we can just Beat this thing into the ground, we'll be good.
Oh, the damage. So much damage. Didn't even need the cure. We beat the thing. God's hand. That is in a weapon for Tifa, I believe. Oh, the submarine left during the fight. Okay, we got another submarine up over there. Perhaps we can go and take that one, because I'm sure one of our characters knows how to operate a submarine. What are these guys doing? Um, alright. Since they're not in a huge ass hurry. I have a feeling we can go and screw around with this stuff. Leviathan Scales is a key item. It's something we're going to be able to use later on in the game. Not necessary, but uh, something that we can get out later. Now, this other weapon here, I believe that was for Sid. Let's see if we can get these guys out quick enough. And Tifa just got herself unconscious. Perfect. Oh yeah, perfect. I gotta get that reflect off of him. Stop taking damage for people. Crazy bitch. This is the item here, the reflect ring. No good. Well, you're not going to do much to stop us from taking over this ship. I mean, really, the average Shinra soldier is completely irrelevant to the battlefield. I mean, how are they expecting to go and defeat, uh, Sephiroth. In reality, their plan isn't actually to defeat Sephiroth. Perhaps that's impossible. But, uh, they do want to take out Meteor. And, I don't know, maybe that's possible. Maybe we shouldn't piss him off. <laughs> oh, and uh, the music changed. Oh, we're surrounded. Using um, all materia on items only will only give you the ability to attack enemies on a certain side. If you're surrounded, it will only attack one side. What is all that? Well, anyway, we got the bridge up here, so we can go and, uh, let's take it. Make this your first victory. Oh, they're doing the one Cloud taught them. 
Let's not bother with this. They gave up real easy. Oh, we'll get the freaking dog to go and do it. Apparently, Cloud is a little claustrophobic. I'm happy to be a hostage. Okay, we're gonna go and, uh... These guys don't know what they're doing. So let's just, let's just do this. Screw the manual. We have ourselves a submarine. That's what I like. Now this is a mini game. I like this mini game. This is pretty awesome. We are going and piloting this submarine and attempting to take out these other submarines. It's a pretty sophisticated mini game for the a game in a series that's generally not extremely well known for the mini games. I mean, when I think of mini games in the Final Fantasy series, oh shit, that was a little too quick. I didn't want it to go that quick. <laughs> when I think of mini games in the Final Fantasy series of the PlayStation era, I tend to think of like Tetra Master, the card games of Final Fantasy VIII and IX, and a lot of the little mini games you could play in IX, especially, or maybe Blitzball in X. But Seven had quite a few mini games. And this one's actually fairly fun. You can do this in Gold Saucer after you've done completed this mini game here, and I may do that in a later episode just to get that out of the way because. I kind of blazed through it a little bit too quickly in this episode. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Oh no, we are going to do that. Okay, we're going to have to race our asses back to Junon. Why? Cuz. What in the hell was that? Jesus Christ, did you see that thing? Okay, let's get back to... Uh You can ride the submarine all you want, but we're going to go and take care of that a little bit later. I'm going to go and do this stuff first. Forget the huge materia, he says. Just go and get to the airport. The airport's not that far away. Just bribe this dude to get us on board. The elevator will be fine. One of the reasons why this game was able to use, like, those moving backgrounds in a game that, like, this is a static background. This is just sort of an image that Cloud is running around on top of. But sometimes you'll see it move like we did just then. That's because the PlayStation, the PS1, had a hardware MPEG decoder, which is one of the reasons why this game was never really able to go out for the Sega Saturn, because the Sega Saturn had no built-in hardware MPEG decoder like what we're looking at right now. Oh, shit. How many planes do they have? 
Why did they need to take the tiny Bronco if they have so many airships and airplanes and all that? Oh, well, that's not coming back. Okay, that's a little scurry. But, um, apparently what's happened was the huge, there was a huge materia on board that airplane. And it is not the same huge materia that was on the... It was not the same huge materia that was on the submarine that we had shot down. That's a little bit confusing. I guess I could have done a better job translating the game to express that fact. But now we have a little bit of time. We can go and do something with our little special submarine. <laughs>